Hey guys and welcome back to another video. Today I'll be showing you how to update your Nexus 6P from the MTC 19V I believe to the MTC 19X build of Android 6.01 while keeping root and whatever else you may have such as exposed and maybe Viper for Android one of those audio equalizers. So to get started I guess I'll just show you that I'm on the I think it's the MTC 19V if I'm not mistaken the, the June update yes down there and we're going to update it to the MTC 19X. So let's get started. So heading back to our computer, we'll see, we'll make a new folder first off to organize things, and we're going to download a couple of things after. So I'm just going to name this Android, just so I can keep track of what we're downloading. And one of the first things we need is the factory image for our Nexus device. So I'm going to uh, check on the terms and conditions here, and we're going to scroll down a little bit to till we see Angler for Nexus 6P. And we can see the 6.01 MTC 19X is here. And I'm going to click on this link button to download it. And we're going to save it in our Android folder, just like that. Now, I've already downloaded this, so I'm going to cancel this for now. But you're going to need to download it. Uh, secondly, you might need the Android Tools folder, which, is, which contains the platform tools, uh, all the utilities in there. So that, that includes your adb.exe, your two DLLs, and your fastboot.exe. And last but not least, you probably want to download the latest SuperSU, now in the stable condition, which is version 2.76. So we also need to download that, and we're going to copy everything, or save everything, into our Android folder. So I'll be back when everything's copied over. Alrighty, so everything's finished, and you can see we have three files here, pretty much. We have the Android Tools folder, which of course includes our EXEs that we need for our computer to communicate with our phone. We're going to need our factory image here and we're going to need our version of SuperSU. So first things first, we're going to go back to our device essentially and we're going to copy over our SuperSU file. So we're going to hit file transfers and we're going to go into the internal storage and we're just going to copy it, copy it straight there. So you can drag it on top like that and you're going to be able to see um, update SuperSU 7.6. I might just get rid of a couple of these just to clean up some stuff. Whoopsie daisy. Just so we can see things a little bit better. And so we have our, well, we don't need that factory image there. So we have our SuperSU file over here. And that's pretty much it, all we need to copy over. And if you need a flash exposed, or if you have the exposed framework, you're going to want to copy over the framework as well back onto your phone or if you already have that you want to flash it uh, again after we flash SuperSU for example so we can close this and you, we have the Android tool zip open up or open already so what we're going to do is I'll just close the rest of these we're going to extract these four files outside just like that and we can close the WinRAR window and we're going to be left with these files so what we need to do now is open up our factory image. It should end in TGZ and not TAR or anything else. Otherwise, you may not see some of the files here. So we're going to see a folder called angular-mtc19x. We're going to double click on that. And we're going to extract, we'll just extract all of these. So this time, instead of using the flash all bat, we might just use, um, we'll just flash everything manually. As I like to mix things up a little bit every, every month. So now also we can open the image-angular-mtc19x zip file here, which is about a gigabyte in size, and we're just going to extract everything outside as well, just to keep things all in one, well, all in one folder, so it's easier to flash these, these images. So while our computer is copying stuff, we can go back to our phone and actually reboot it back into the bootloader. So what I'm going to do is power off, and I'm also going to unplug the USB cable. Uh, that is just so it doesn't turn on automatically by itself again which is uh, quite annoying. So I'm going to wait for this to power off, and once it has, you want to hold the power button and volume down together, and that will get you into the bootloader. Just like that. And we can plug in our USB cable again. And once that is plugged in, and you can see our files have finished copying, I'll just move this to the side a little bit. All you need to do is find this clear space on the side, hold shift and press right click. And from there you want to click on open command window here, and you'll see this uh, command window. 
I might just move the picture up here so we can get a, a better view. Oops. Okay. Now I'm gonna figure out where to put all this stuff. I'll just leave it down here. So first things first, we want to flash the bootloader. In this case, it has been updated uh, to 0 0.0 something ending in 3.2 instead. So we're gonna type in fast boot flash bootloader. Leave a space on the end here, and we're gonna drag in the bootloader image. Oh, the version's up there, 0.3.52. And we're gonna flash that. Now once that is flashed, we're gonna type in fast boot reboot dash bootloader just like that and our phone is going to restart itself back into the bootloader and next up we're going to flash the radio so we're going to type in fast boot flash radio leave a space on the end yet again we're going to drag in our radio image and then hit enter now that will flash pretty quickly I'm going to resize this a little bit so I can see the bottom and another thing we're going to reboot back into the bootloader so you can press the up arrow key on your keyboard twice to go back two previous commands and then you can hit enter or you can just type in fast boot reboot dash bootloader again and once your phone is booted back into the bootloader we're going to flash the boot image so this is in no particular order but I'm just going from top to bottom almost so we're going to type in fast boot flash boot leave a space in the end drag in our image hit enter okay so now we're going to flash the cache image so I'm going to type in fast boot flash cache leave a space in the end and drag in our image here and then hit enter and that's done Next up, we're going to flash the system image. So we're going to type in fast boot flash system, leave a space in the end, and then drag in our image, I mean, sorry, system image, and we're going to hit enter. I'll just scroll this down a little bit because we'll need that. And the system image is the largest one by far, and it will take roughly a minute, a whole minute to flash, and that should be no problem. So it's going to send them in little packages, little sparse images, and it shouldn't take too long. Alrighty, so you can see it's finished now, and it took a little bit over a minute. And the last thing we're going to flash is our user, not user data, our vendor image. So it's a little bit down here, we're going to type in fast boot flash vendor. Leave a space in the end, dragging our vendor image onto the command prompt window, and we're going to hit enter, and that will flash our vendor image. And once that is done, we're going to head back to our device and boot into TWRP. So from here, we just need to press the, the uh, volume down arrow a couple times, or the button, and until you see recovery mode, and we'll boot into TWRP, hopefully. So on our computer, you can pretty much close up all these, all these now, and you can essentially um, delete all the things that we've extracted, if you'd like to save some space. And heading back to our device here, um, we're just gonna enter our decryption code. If you have a modified boot image that you need to flash to keep your data partition decrypted, um, you would have done so already, hopefully. But this is uh, regarding, or expecting that you don't have a decrypted data partition. And we're gonna enter our Pattern, I hope that's right. Okay, that looks fine. And from here, we're going to install. I'm going to scroll down to SuperSU. We're going to flash it. And then after this, if you need to flash exposed or something like that, you'll probably want to do that as well. And also be able to get your modules back up and running without any hassle. So this will, of course, install SuperSU, patch our boot image. I, what I assume for um, for systemless root, you can check in the um, in the SuperSU app that I just found out recently. So I'm going to reboot the system. But if you needed to flash uh, Super S not SuperSU, exposed or anything else like that, you'll probably need to flash that before we restart. So we'll be back after restarting, and we should see our device rooted on the latest. MTC 19X. Uh, a couple more months and we'll be moving on to Android N, which is 
all fun and exciting. So I'll be back when my phone turns on and you will experience maybe a couple boot loops here while SuperSU does its thing during startup and that should be no biggie. So I'll see you on the other side when your phone's booted up. All right, so our phone is finished optimizing its apps and we'll now take a look at us being rooted on the MTC 19X. So there is SuperSU. Oh, give me an open. And then we're gonna see our apps pop up here, which should be a few. Oh, anyway, we'll go into the settings and you can probably see here that it is, it says it's, uh, it is not currently available in the systemless root mode. Maybe the apps have shown up already. Well, not yet. Uh, I do have titanium backup somewhere, so if that works, then it's all good, right? There we go. We're up and running, and we're going to see ourselves on the latest MTC 19X on the July update. And there we are. So thank you guys for watching this video. If you found it helpful, feel free to leave a like down below and subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. They happen out monthly, and a lot of more, um, I guess, different tutorials are coming out pretty soon. I can't really promise anything, but uh, hopefully they will come. And if you have any problems or any suggestions or requests for videos regarding the Nexus 6P, that's the only phone I have at the moment, um, feel free to leave that down in the comments as well. And that's about it. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.